hey guys welcome back to my channel it has been a while but i got another diy for you guys i'm gonna show you guys how i took this horrible ratty looking bench which side note uh, my grandmother passed away on january 3rd of 2017 of this year and this was actually her bench so i was very honored to redo this bench and turn it into this lovely mirrored bench we're gonna go through it i'm gonna show you guys how i went from that to this honey and yes i did tuft the cushion and seat and everything so let's get into it stay tuned Okay guys, first things first, I'm just gonna flip the bench over and get it in position. And as you guys can see from the opening credits, the bench was dirty, okay? It had basically been sitting outside by the dumpsters for years and it was my grandmother's repast or something just told me like, oh hey, um, go get this bench because we had a lot of people over our house for you know her repast and I ended up getting the bench, putting it in the front to have um, guests sit on with a towel on that and um i just got tired of looking at it because it was so ugly sitting in the front so i was like you know what i'll redo it and then lo and behold it turns out to be my grandmother's bench so side note from that story a funny thing is is the fact that you get a bench outside you know um it's a lot going on with that and basically um your girl had to go through some things with some insects you know I don't know why I just thought I was gonna get a bench that's been sitting outside for years and you know none of the insects was gonna claim that bench but you know what I had to fight for that bench because I was my grandma's bench and you know I was gonna make sure that it was living left in her legacy okay I was redoing it to be left in her legacy so I had to go through some things so uh just watch This thing is riddled. Riddled. Oh my god. Oh my goodness. Okay. Good to know. But yeah, we got this whole thing out. So that's great. <sighs> Almost lost my freaking toes, but it's fine, you know. Spiders don't want my toes. Like it's totally okay, you know. I don't know where they just went right now, you know. Really close to my front door, but it's totally okay, right? This bitch is gonna be great. Oh, oh my god, oh my god. You're dead? Mine didn't uh, no, it's dead. Uh, oh my god. Dang it, it, it dropped. What? Right. Uh, my little pointer I was gonna use. You, you got the, twi the thing in your hand. Oh, it's not long enough. Oh my god. Oh, the spider's everywhere. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hold on, I'm working on Film everything. Oh my god. Oh, what should I do? So I just hold it like this? I can't film this. Oh lord. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. I told you that. <laughs> I told you! <laughs> oh my god. Where'd it go? Oh, it's right there, it's right there. I told you it was alive, oh girl. My oh my god. Here, I'm not holding this thing. Okay. I told you it's damn alive. Oh. I tell you. You did? No, it looked dead. You know it looked dead. It moved. Oh, they sleep. Oh my god. <laughs> Okay, so let's get past all the craziness. I was eventually able to get all the spiders out. Yes, even that huge black widow, which was the scariest thing in my life. Um, but moving on, I had to thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly clean this bench and then we could finally start with the project. So I took a piece of sandpaper that I already had for my previous project and I just went over and pretty much sanded down the ends of the legs which were filled with dirt and rust 
um, and just it gave it a more smooth finish as you can see here and I did that to all the legs um, this wasn't a big project that I needed to sand but I wanted the legs to be really smooth since that was going to be the main thing painted so next I'm going to prime the bench with this two times uh, Rust-Oleum primer in gray um, this is the same primer I used for my previous DIY with my mirror dresser um, I basically wanted to do a furniture theme or furniture collection kind of theme so I did the same colors and the same concepts and I'm gonna keep that going on my channel so subscribe and stay tuned for that if you're gonna love that okay and this is just how it looks with a couple coats of primer and as it's drying. Side note, um, I'm doing this at night and I'm powering through it because y'all seen what I had to go through earlier with the spiders. So basically, my project was pushed back to the night so I could really get this done for you guys. Next, I'm moving on to the legs of the bench and I'm just going to go and start priming those. I'm flipping it around by the bottom of the nails and priming all around. And this is how it looks after it has been primed. Um, I'm giving you guys light realness right now. <laughs> Hope you appreciate it. But this is just a look of, you know, the coating and the thickness of everything after. It's just been primed with the gray primer. Okay, and next I'm going in with the same Rust-Oleum in metallic that I used on my previous dresser as well. Just a side by side on the two bench legs of the one on the left used with the primer and the metallic and the one on the right just with the primer. This is just the bottom of the bench. I only colored the bottom of the bench because I knew I was going to add a cushion to the bench. This is just some plywood I picked up from Home Depot. I knew that the top of my bench was rounded wood, so I just took a pair of scissors and the wood was so dense, I was just able to take a pair of scissors and kind of cut off the ends and therefore take sanding paper, sand it down, and make it rounded in the same dimensions as the top of my bench already was. Okay, so next it's time for me to do the tufted pattern of the bench. So I started out with my middle row in increments. So my first starting point was at 2 inches. And then from then on it went from 6 inch increments. So it went from 2 to 8 inches, from 8 to 14 inches, from 14 to 20 inches, from 20 to 26 inches, and so on and so forth until we got down to the bottom. Um, and the whole bench, I believe, was about 46 inches. Um, so with that being said, every tufted pattern is different, but that is how I went down for the middle row. And then the two rows on the outside, I went down four inches and did the same six inch increments. So this is just um, a glimpse of how it looks. And as you guys can see, I've made many X's because it took me a while to get the right pattern for the size and the style that I was going for. But the silver X's are my final X's. <laughs> So next, I am going to start drilling into my marked spots on my bench. Um, I'm using this electric drill, but I don't know why I felt like I needed an electric drill to do this project when the plywood was so dang thin. Um, so basically, I started off using an electric drill, but I ended up just using a screwdriver and a screw to basically screw through the thin plywood. And then I took my upholstery pins, as you can see here, and I just made sure that those stuck through. I twisted them out to make sure the hole was circular because I was only making the hole so the upholstery pins can go through. So once again, I'm just taking a screw, placing it at my plate marked positions and screwing a hole through my thin plywood. Um, so the upholstery needles I got, I ordered them from eBay and those were essential for the method that I wanted to use to tuft this bench. Um, as you can see, it is in the lower left corner, but the upholstery buttons that I have are actually prongs, which means they can go through and it's two silver prongs at the end to solidify and lock in um, any fabric or anything like that. So they're perfect for tufting and since I wasn't gonna do, you know, any thick wood, the pronged um, upholstery needles were essential for me other than um, having to sew, you know, needles down or go that method. The prongs um, were like the easiest and fastest method for me. Okay, so after that, we're gonna move on to our second part of our project and some things you're gonna need are any type of 
glue prefer we gorilla glue um, a staple gun this is a flashlight but this is also a flashlight um, the same as that goes to my drill and I have some spray adhesive this is very necessary to make the cushion and I have my drill gun which goes to the same part as the light And next, it's time to start working on this cushion. Now, the foam that you guys see here is foam that I actually ordered off of eBay. Um, I got 18 by 50 um, one inch uh, thing of foam and that was about $10. So um, the pricing in craft stores for high density foam is actually pretty expensive. So um, I went online for a lot of the things for this bench. I had never upholstered anything before. I had, I had no idea really how to do this. This is literally my first time upholstering anything. Um, so this is what I did. So I go ahead, um, I laid my foam out um, along my plywood that has already been cut and measured and just cut along um, and measured the foam to fit the plywood. So next, after I have my foam all cut to place, I am just taking my spray adhesive, spraying down the plywood. Um, this stuff is really kind of stick and spider-like, <laughs> but it works. So I'm just taking the adhesive, spraying it to my plywood all over that bad boy, and I'm laying my foam on top of it and adding pressure. Obviously, the best way to test out, you know, a new cushion is to lay on it yourself and uh, just just feel the the comfort. So, don't judge. <laughs> also, when your dog just will not leave you alone and is always into everything, you know, you just you might just gotta wrap her with a little bit of foam too, and give her some foam kisses and uh, you know just just send her on her merry way. Okay, but back to business. So we've got our board, we got everything set up and marked off. My holes have already been drilled through, so I'm just taking my upholstery buttons and pushing them through. That way, you see it just peek up at the top just like this. I can push it straight through the foam because it has a pointed end, um, and that's why these buttons are really, really um, beneficial for this project. But basically, this is how it looks. I pushed all my buttons through all my X's. So before we move on to the next step, this is just how it looks overall. Okay, so moving on, I'm taking the same spray adhesive that I used to spray and glue the foam to the plywood and using that for my cotton batting. Um, so this is just some cotton, uh, that cotton filling that I ordered off of eBay as well. It was dirt cheap. This was about $4 for this whole bag. And I used not even a, probably 10% of the bag. Um, this stuff spreads out and this is needed when you're upholstering anything. You can't just upholster with foam um, just because you're making the actual cushion. The cotton um, is what actually makes a seat soft if that makes sense um, so here's just a quick overview of how it looks halfway done as you can see I still have all my nails poking up and you'll see why in a second and this is it fully done um, I put cotton all over the sides all over the top um, I also still have all my upholstery buttons poking through the top and that is for the step right here so this is the fabric that I found I fell in love with it I found it at Joann's I got a half a yard I um, mean I got it cut into my dimensions so as you can see, the fabric that I got was actually stretchy and I wanted it like that. I wanted a fabric that was gonna be comfortable to sit on. I'm just able to poke a hole right through the fabric and this is the way I am doing the tufted pattern. So I just take the prong right from the bottom. I take it out, flip it over and press it right through the top, right through the fabric, right through the foam. I press it all the way through, all the way down. And then I flip it over and I just start to flatten my prongs, um, push those down on either side and secure my buttons and secure the fabric on with the plywood. 
So this method is actually a lot harder than it looks. Um, it probably looks pretty simple here, but basically what I was doing was feeling for a hole. So you guys can probably tell this got extremely um, tedious at some point, but I basically felt the top of the hole and tried to hold down the foam hold down the fabric, apply pressure to it. That way I can just take it out at the bottom and put it straight through a hole if that made sense without moving any of the fabric. And I did that um, with 22 prongs. So once again, guys, this was just my method for tufting, but I basically, as you guys seen, had the prongs pointing up through the fabric so I just tried to pull it down and put it straight through without moving anything if that made sense and then I went and just pushed down my prongs closed it down and secured the buttons okay next this is just an overview of how the cushion is looking with all the buttons pushed through and I'm just taking the back of a screwdriver and pressing down for those prongs just to make sure that the buttons are all the way pressed down. So next, I am just taking any additional cotton batting, cotton filling, and just pressing it in right before I finalize and staple down the fabric to my Bench. Okay, next I'm just going in with my staple gun and I'm starting to staple the fabric to the actual bench. Um, the plywood was basically just used as a middle piece for the prongs because I knew that was going to be the way I did my tufting. Um, that was pretty much it. I didn't feel the need to glue down the plywood to my actual wooden bench or anything like that just because the fabric that I got was stretchy material, so I knew it was going to be a tight fit anyway. Um, as you can see, I'm just cutting off um, the excess fabric, but I knew it was going to be a tight fit, so there was no need for me to really glue down the plywood to the actual bench. All I needed to do was staple it to the wood of the actual bench. Okay guys, we are almost freaking done, okay? Here I got some Gorilla Glue and the mirrors that I'm using to decorate are these craft mirrors I got from Hobby Lobby. Um, these are $2.29. I got some in squared and I got some in rectangle shape. Um, but I am just taking the Gorilla Glue. Side note guys, side note, okay? I had to do this twice. Why? Because your girl put too much Gorilla Glue and didn't know that the Gorilla Glue freaking spreads when it dries. Super nice. So what you're seeing right now is part one. But as you can see, I just draped on too much glue and got too glue happy. And you about to see in a second what happened because of that, okay? Warning, warning, too much Gorilla Glue will leave your project looking smashed and effed up. <laughs> Yeah, guys, um, I was only able to clamp the outsides and it shows. Lucky your girl thought on her feet and I was able to savage, salvage, <laughs> salvage my bench by uh, flipping it on the other side, duh. Um, and here, as you can see, I'm using way less glue and I am spreading it out way more and I am centering it because now for the second time I know that the glue will spread so that is a good amount compared to what I was doing okay keeping it thin and laying them flat and taking some clamps and clamping each of the mirrors in the middle of the mirror that way I can put pressure to more mirrors without using as many clamps but the clamps are necessary that's the only thing i learned from my first mistake is had all the mirrors been clamped in the first place they wouldn't have moved so there's a tip from me to you <laughs> and our last step finally we have arrived is some good old windex clean off those mirrors make it nice shiny and clean 
you now have a mirrored dresser girl. I mean, um, bench. <laughs> you have a mirrored bench. So keep that Windex handy. Keep it handy. Keep it right. Keep it tight. Keep it chic, okay? I mean, chick, chic, whatever. <laughs> And this is the finished product, guys. I hope you guys liked it. I came in 2017 with new inspiration. This is all in memory of my grandmother. And I love, you know, this bench. I hope you guys love how it came out. Please comment. Please like. Give your girl a thumbs up. And subscribe if you want to see more of this mirrored furniture collection. Um, I just, this took a lot of patience, hard work, and sacrifice, but in the end, it was all worth it. Um, this is something so important for me to do for my grandmother, and I want her memory to live on forever. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Bye.